just the other day Jesus came my way He told me that he loved me Oh yes he did
Lord has been good to you, tell him thank you. If the Lord ever made a way for you, tell him thank you. If the Lord ever opened a door for you, tell him thank you. Do me a favor, look over at your neighbor and tell him after all I've been through. Tell him after all the devil tried to do to me. Tell him I still have my joy. Come on and give God some praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. First of all, let me say that I am yet saved and sanctified, filled with God's precious Holy Ghost, and that with the mighty burning fire. And I do speak in tongue as the Spirit give utterance. Hallelujah. I'm glad that I'm saved and sanctified, not ashamed of who I am, not ashamed of what God has called me to be, because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would be messed up. Why don't you look at somebody and say, I'd be messed up too. I certainly am going to be as expeditious as possible, but I certainly want to give honor and respect. Um, You may not like my terminology, but please allow me to get away with it today. I want to give honor and respect to one of my heroes. Uh, I've watched this man for many years, and uh, uh, I heard him say in Memphis, Tennessee, follow me home. And uh, I followed him home. And I came to West Angeles. Nobody knew me. I stood in line in the hot summer trying to get into a worship service. And uh, somebody noticed my wife. Y'all know my wife, right? They noticed my wife and they came and got me from the back of the line and took me up front. And I went in that service and I observed how his service was run. I went back home to my small church. I probably had about eight members. Well, I had eight when I started. Preacher who was emceeing. And that preacher would get up and he would just preach before me. And uh, choir would sing, and he'd get up. They sing, uh, uh, thank you, Lord. He'd get up and say, thank you, Lord, stop preaching. And uh, then somebody would get up and testify, and then he'd get back up and testify and preach on their testimony. But I observed Bishop Charles Blake's service. I noticed that there was no MC, so I went back home and fired him. I observed what he was doing in his service, and I mimicked it. The late Bishop James L. Whitehead complimented me and said that you are the Charles Blake of Detroit. And I'm so thankful. Will you help me appreciate my hero, Bishop Charles Edward Blake, presiding Bishop Emeritus. thankful. My heart is leaping with gladness to be sitting here with him on today. And I want to certainly thank God for you have a stellar leader. You have a man, a no-nonsense man, but he is a tremendous leader, a godly man, speaks with wisdom, I'm so thankful that I know him. I'm so impressed by what he does. Of course, jurisdiction, uh, you you all call yourself J1, and that's good because you are the number one jurisdiction. (laughs) Bishop Ely, and of course, the supervisor gave more financial assistance than any other jurisdiction in the Church of God in Christ. Thank you, Bishop. I love you, sir. And uh, I didn't do this because he did that. I want to make that very clear. I did not do this because he did it. 
but uh, it fits right along. God leads you in mysterious ways. And so I want to say that Bishop Joe Lewis Ely will be opening up our holy convocation in 2025, 24, 24, the first day. Yes, sir, we are honored. We are honored. We've got a plethora of bishops here. I certainly want to thank God for all of the bishops. Uh, we have Bishop Daniel Littleton from Mississippi and Bishop Robert Rudolph from Arkansas. Bishop Ethan Sheard from Michigan. And uh, I certainly want to thank God for them. Pastor Charles Blake, thank you for allowing us to utilize this beautiful cathedral. Pastor John Terrace Tate, my friend, is here. I'm glad to see you. All of the bishops, you don't believe I can call your names, but watch this. Bishop Thomas Hill, Richardson, Hardin, Henderson, Morgan, Gibson, Watts, Rome, Gibson again. Amen. To all of the administrative assistants and superintendents and pastors, elders and ministers, Oh my God, California is loaded. Yes. We praise God for the international supervisor of the women's department of the Church of God in Christ. Excellent leader. God bless you, Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis. And to your supervisor, my sister, I'm so thankful for her. She is, can I say it like this? She is a bad sister. Mother Barbara, Dr. Brown, Bryant, amen. To Lady Mae Blake, what class and sophistication, thank you. To the First Lady of this church, First Lady DeAndre Blake, and my dear sister, Mother Kathy Glover, I'm so, and all of these beautiful women of God, supervisors, district missionaries, evangelists, missionaries, first ladies, women of God, saints and friends. Did I get everybody? Amen. I'm so thankful to be here and um, I have a gift. Uh, I, know that you are, I know that you don't do it like this, but I could not come this way and not render a gift to Bishop Joe Ely. Um, Bishop uh, Ethan Shear, give that to Bishop Ely. Tell him, put that in his pocket. That doesn't go in the offering. And Dr. Bryant, put this in your purse. Yes, put that in your purse. That doesn't go in the offering. Amen. That go. I've been here since Friday. My wife, uh, we were in Utah on Thursday, and she said she was coming to California, so I figured that I would come out here and uh, was going to escort her to an event on Friday night and uh, instead of going back home and then coming back and so uh, I got here and uh, caught a cold and, uh, and so I've been in my hotel room and then my back went out and my wife say see you don't have enough sense to sit down so God will sit you down and so I've been in my hotel room I cannot believe that I've been in sub sunny Southern California, stuck in a hotel room. Amen. But that's where I've been, and so I'm so thankful. I love you with the love of the Lord. If you don't love me, I got an edge on you because I love you with the love of the Lord. I'm gonna be very brief, and hopefully um, this won't take very long. I just wanna talk to you from a very familiar passage of scripture. It's found in the book of Acts, the second chapter, and we're gonna start reading at the first through the fourth verses. If you'll be so kind to stand in reverence to the word of the Lord. There you will find these words, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, 
and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want to talk to you for the next few fleeting moments from the subject, the results of Pentecost. The results of Pentecost. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Please know that this is an abbreviated sermon because I do realize what time it is. But we recently celebrated the day of Pentecost and we must forever remember that it was a special day in the life of the church for it heightened the expectation of our purpose. It gives us a reference uh, as to when the church became the explosive entity that it has become. Many times when we think of the day of Pentecost, we simply remember that there was a great sound from heaven and many began to speak in unknown tongues. But the fact of the matter is that it is not just about tongues, but it's about power, dunamis power. Dunamis is the Greek word that means power, ability, or potential. It also is translated as might, strength, and miraculous power. In the New Testament, dunamis is referred to 120 times and is often used to describe miraculous power or marvelous works that Jesus performed. For example, in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, the apostle so Paul referred to this dunamis to describe God giving his people the ability to stand strong in their faith and share it with others. That power has been made available to the church and it was made available on that great day. My brothers and sisters, the Holy Ghost descended in answer to the explicit promise of our glorified Savior and the disciples had been prayerfully awaiting its arrival. In the fourth and fifth verses of the first chapter of Acts, the Bible says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. And then in Acts 1 and 5, the Bible says, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And then if you move down to the 14th verse of that same chapter, we find these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. The Spirit, my brothers and sisters, sisters came upon them as power from on high. God the Holy Ghost proved on the day of Pentecost his personal existence and the intellect, the hearts and the lives of the apostles were miraculously changed as a result of it. Because of this experience the apostles were fitted for the arduous task that was before them. And likewise, the task that is before us cannot be accomplished by mere words or efforts. For we face satanic influences that have been sanctioned by ungodly influences. Therefore, we, we, the church, must receive sanctions from influences that are greater than those. My brothers and sisters, there is some difference of opinion as to what is the significance of Pentecost for the church as an institution. The almost universal opinion among theologians and exegetes is that Pentecost marks the rounding of the Christian church as an institution. Pentecost is said to mark the dividing line between the ministry of Jesus and the ministry of the Holy Ghost. It was further noted by one respected theologian who said Christ gathers a church about himself, rules it 
directly so long as he is on the earth and appoints 12 apostles who later will be noted as his witnesses. My brothers and sisters, the fact remains that Pentecost completely changed and revolutionized the apostles and the endowment with the Holy Ghost enabled them to become the witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and to extend the church according to the commandments of Jesus Christ. And so, and so the Bible inextricably says in that second chapter of Acts, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, well, that phrase fully come is denoted by seven weeks and one day after the resurrection. The Bible says they were all with one accord in one place. I'm going to mess up here because part of our problem today is that we can't come together. We're always dealing with some contrary spirits. But if we can ever come together, look at somebody and say some bad things are going to happen. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Now, I know that they've been talking about me on the social media, but we need that sound. Now, I remember when I first started pastoring. Now, I had eight people in a small building. Now, but what we did in the summertime was let the windows up and open the door, and people will come from the neighborhoods, and they sat on the side walking on the porch uh, because there was a unique sound uh, that was going on in the church. Uh, it was not the same sound as the club uh, because the club was down the street. Uh, they didn't go there but they came to the church uh, where there was a unique sound. I'm here to tell you church uh, that we need our sound back sound of a mighty rushing wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it set upon them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. I find it especially interesting to note that the Bible explicitly noted uh, that tongue speaking uh, was done by the utterance uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, in other words, the Spirit speaks through an individual. Uh, therefore, you can't go uh, to a and pay a registration fee uh, and go to a class and learn how to speak in tongue. Uh, you can't pay for this tongue. Uh, you can't order this tongue on somebody else. And y'all excuse me, but maybe that's why many are confused today because they are not speaking by the utterance of the Holy Ghost. And perhaps that's why they can speak in tongue in church and then go out on the parking lot and cuss you out. Oh, church, there's something wrong now. Say what you will, but the day of Pentecost marks the beginning of a powerful era that has been earmarked as making a difference in the world. As long as Jesus himself was on the earth, he was the power to deal with. But Jesus very succinctly told us that he couldn't stay here. So there had to be a power to enable his lieutenants to carry out the commission. My brothers and sisters say what you will, but Jesus made it very clear that it was not about him only, but he said, I've got to leave you and go back to my father and he's going to send you another comforter. He said in the 14th chapter of John and the 16th verse, and I will pray 
the Father, uh, and he shall give you another comforter uh, that he may abide with you forever. Yeah. Yes, we believe uh, that God is manifested in three persons. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Uh, and God the Father created this world, uh, but yet Jesus and the Holy Ghost was with him. Uh, but when man messed up, uh, God the Son had to come uh, and bridge the gap between earth and heaven. Uh, Jesus came uh, and Jesus said, you're going to need somebody uh, to help you through this thing. Uh, you're going to need somebody uh, that's going to lead you and guide you. Uh, so I'm going to pray to my Father uh, that he'll send God the Holy Ghost. Uh, look at somebody and say, we believe in it. And so they had crucified and buried Jesus. What they, the world, didn't understand was that they were setting us, the church, up to be the most powerful group of people in the world. Church, the church is to carry on the work that Jesus and the apostles began. Let me reiterate that Penta means 50, which is noted as 50 days after the day in which God raised Jesus from the dead. Might I further remind you that Jesus said there would be power associated with his resurrection. For even Paul picked it up in the third chapter of Philippians and the 10th verse and wanted to know. He said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering uh, being made conformable unto his death. Uh, the power to raise the dead uh, is unfathomable to the carnal mind. Uh, but being associated uh, with that kind of power that comes from the Holy Ghost, uh, it not only gives us power uh, to change things around, uh, but it gives us power uh, to walk upright. Uh, Ah, the actual day of Pentecost uh, is somewhat thwarted because the enemies of the church uh, do not want us to be reminded uh, of the power that we have been given uh, to fulfill our assignment. Uh, but if you look in the Bible in Acts 1 and 8, uh, the word of God spoke to us prophetically uh, and told us, but ye shall receive power uh, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Look at somebody and say you ought to be a witness. But church, we have become aloof and we have become positioned for failure by our culture. In this statistical society which tells us that church going is at an all time low. In this I don't need God nor his church era the devil will have us to believe that our efforts are futile but look at somebody and tell them the devil is a lie we, the ecclesia, the church, uh, have been empowered to shake up the world. Uh, if you go over to the 17th chapter of Acts, uh, the enemies of the church uh, were looking for the apostles. Uh, the church hadn't been identified uh, as a denomination, uh, but yet they were labeled. Uh, they were not labeled uh, as Baptists and Methodists and Church of God in Christ but yet they were labeled they were labeled as a group that had come here and turned the world upside down church we got work to do church we got work to do because we have been empowered to shake up the world and Jesus told us in the 16th chapter of Mark go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is 
is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned and these signs shall follow them that believe I wonder today do you have any signs do you have any signs he said in my name look at somebody help me preach I'm almost through tell somebody there's something about that name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover look at somebody and say don't let me lay my hands on you oh you got the wrong person look at somebody else and say don't let me lay my hands on you because I got power in my hands the power that comes after you receive the Holy Ghost look at somebody and say get ready because you're going to need some power you need power power to walk right power to talk right power to treat your neighbor right power to treat your enemies right power to defeat the enemy that you are facing we're not called to sedate the devil we're too busy trying to psychoanalyze why demons are in the church we want to know their names we want to know where they come from but Jesus never told you to interview a demon Jesus told you to cast them out cast them out and I want to serve notice to you on the day that on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost had come down and set upon them they were in the upper room and men gathered wondering what in the world is going on and the Bible says that some people began to mock them making the ridiculous implication that they had been involved with some intoxicating beverage by saying that these men are full of new wine but I heard Peter stand up and said listen men these are not Trump as ye suppose for it is only the third hour of the day but this is that look at your neighbor and say do you have it y'all ain't ready for this one look at your neighbor and say do you have it is there anybody over here that has this is there anybody over here that has that then y'all ought to act like them because this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel he said in the last days I'm gonna pour out my spirit on all flesh get ready neighbor I'm asking God to pour it out on the reformed dope addict pour it out on the reformed prostitute pour it out on people that said they couldn't get it and then God come in the church and pour it out on the mother's board pour it out on the deacon board pour it out on the choir member the lay member the missionary the preacher the professor the doctor the lawyer the butcher the baker and the candlestick maker pour it out pour it out grab your neighbor by the hand and say oh neighbor I got power to turn the world upside down you got the wrong neighbor grab another neighbor and say neighbor I got power to turn the world upside down get ready church I believe God is giving us another revival I believe God 
is giving us another chance. Are you using your power? Stop complaining. Stop murmuring. Shake things up. Turn things around. I heard the old saints and they sung a song. They said, I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire and burn with the Holy Ghost. Grab somebody by the hand. Hold a hand real tight. Pull on them and push them. Push them and pull on them. And say, neighbor, it's your time to catch on fire. It's your time to praise God. It's your time to give him the glory. Praise him. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. neighbor don't forget what happened huh? when you got the holy there you to call on Jesus cause there's power in the name there's deliverance in the name there's salvation in the name Jesus I'll never forget Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Yay. Oh, I owe him a praise. Do you owe him a praise? The results of Pentecost gives us to praise him. Praise him. your neighbor there's power because of Pentecost grab a hold of that neighbor's hand and say neighbor into your hands I squeeze an anointing tell them neighbor into your hands I squeeze boldness come on say neighbor in the hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and give the Lord a hand for you. While you're standing, hallelujah, hallelujah. There may, a, there may be a person here today who does not know Jesus as your personal savior. My brother, my sister, you don't have to leave this way the way you've come. For the Bible inextricably said that if any man be in Christ, 
he's a new creature. All things have become, all things have passed away and all, and all things have become new. If you are here today and don't know Jesus, step out from where you are and come this way. Jesus is waiting, standing at the door of your heart, knocking, and all you have to do is open up and let the Lord come in. Is there one? Won't you come while you still have a chance? If you're watching in our virtual space, the Holy Ghost may have preached your heart. My brothers, my sisters, all you have to do is believe that Jesus Christ lived, died, and rose again. Believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth. And the Bible says you shall be saved. My brothers and sisters, let us lead those who are in our virtual space. Lift those hands wherever you are and repeat after me, Lord, I'm sorry for all of my sins. I believe that you live, that you died, and that you rose again just for me. And from this day forward, I make a commitment to you that I'll live a life that'll be pleasing in your eyes. Thank you for another chance. Come on, thank him for another chance. Come on, thank him for another chance. Thank you for another chance. Thank you now, thank him now. Come on, thank him now. Think about where the Lord brought you from. Think about how the Lord brought you out. Oh, I got a right to praise him. And I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mind. Thank you for watching the Jonathan Desvernay Gospel Channel. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.